Uh, this was, was going to be an update video on what's happening with all the fish, but I think I might just change it to what you feed baby fish, Mr. Redtail Catfish, uh, because we have so many baby fish at the moment, it is not funny. Laugh, laugh, laugh. <laughs> um, yeah, where do we even start? I think behind me in this huge big tank here, uh, the Trimac. So the Trimax are on their third batch of eggs. Yes, I have managed to save a lot of them. So these guys, I think, are due to hatch in the next day or so. That's her in the pot. Where did I see the boy? The boy went somewhere. The boy's somewhere in there. He's vanished. There he is. There he is. So they're pretty big fish. I think they're maybe, I don't know, 30 centimeters, 25 centimeters, something like that. This is a very big tank. Yes. So we have first batch of babies that are in this tank which looks super yellow at the moment but it's actually not that bad so lots and lots of babies in there there they are on the screen because obviously i have no lights on these still uh tons of babies of everything at the moment what i'm going to do is basically go through what i feed the babies they are the two easiest foods oh wow look at her so that there is a blind cave tetra and she is so filled with eggs, it's not funny. Um, I am going to spawn them super, 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 super quick. Super quick? No, super soon. <laughs> it is very, very early morning. Uh, These uh, tanks here are just my grow out tanks or conditioning tanks. So I think I have a, quite a few females in there. I only have one male blind cave tetra. So ideally when you breed stuff like this, you want to get more males than females because they lay the eggs and then the male fertilizes them outside the female's body, but she is huge. So I do have a little tank set up over there. If you want a video on how to spawn Tetris and stuff, just comment down below. Otherwise, I don't know if I even bother filming it. I know I've got too much stuff going on, but that's okay. So yes, that's just gonna be a fun thing because wow, she is so huge. Anyway, uh, what we're gonna do is go through the basics of what we feed our baby fish albino i always forget the names of these what are they they're albino cherry barbs somehow albino and cherry barb just doesn't go together but all our baby albino cherry barbs in there some look like cherry barbs i think they are about a month old now so i do need to hook these tanks up to the sump which is pumping to these tanks here so i've got water flow going through and i think if i just have a little sponge over that I shouldn't lose any babies in there. So let's go to what we feed them. And it honestly took me about 10 minutes to find this. My little cup and my pipette. Is it a pipette? A pipe a pet? I don't know, a pet pipe. Anyway, what you wanna do is obviously get some water, ideally water out of the tank you're feeding from. You need to find some space because you don't have space because you're very disorganized with cups and stuff everywhere. Uh, I'm using this stuff, which is decapsulized baby brine shrimp. I think it's Ocean Nutrition brand. I do sell this, it's on the screen. There'll be a link in the description. It is awesome. You do not need to, oh, uh, there we go. That, that's kind of enough. You get a ton of it. Um, however many grams are on the screen at the moment. And all it is, is brine shrimp that's actually been decapsulized. So they probably use some weird ass chemical to sort of remove the shell of the brine shrimp. So you've got the tiny little brine shrimp that has not hatched. So it has more nutrition than a hatched brine shrimp because it hasn't used any energy to break through the shell. And once you soften it with water or rehydrate it, that's the technical term, soften it with water. <laughs> once you soften it with water, you can use this to feed your baby fish. Uh, we have a silly amount of baby fish at the moment. So I think I've got baby angel fish, there's a few American cichlids. African cichlids, Central American cichlids, tons more cichlids. Oh, the little cool ones with the stripe in there, if you can see them, they're the wolf cichlids, so the dovey. So I did manage to save some of their fry. I do need to breed them again. More cichlids there, more cichlids there. Cichlid, cichlid, cichlid. I think this is the cichlid wall at the moment. But once you've de rehydrated it, not dehydrated it, and it only takes about oh, less than a minute sort of thing. Use your little pipette thing like that, and then, you just squirt it in like that. And this is what I've been using for pretty much the bulk of all my fish fry at the moment. And I've probably got, oh, I don't even know how many baby fish I've got at the moment. There would probably be three, 4,000 baby fish. There's a lot of baby fish over there and everywhere at the moment. You get, oh, 
tons of them will survive on this stuff. So it's a lot easier than actually hatching brine shrimp, as I said. If you've never hatched brine shrimp before, it is a right pain, mainly because you need salt water and you have to wash it and you have to make new salt water up all the time. It's a pain, but this stuff is brilliant. So quite a few different fish will eat this as well. The only fish that won't be able to eat it are like better fish fry, a lot of little tetris and stuff that are just way too small for newly hatched brine shrimp as well. So what we do with those is we feed them microworms for about a week or two first and then onto the decapsulized baby brine shrimp and away you go. And as you can see with those little guys on the screen, their little tiny bellies are completely filled with brine shrimp already. That was super quick. Awesome. So you just want to feed them about three or four times a day. Now we're going to jump to the barbs and the tetras around the other side. And we have our cherry barbs. Hello, cherry barbs. Hello. That was them, honestly. And all it is, is that. And there is their delicious shrimp breakfast. <laughs> oh, look how cute they are. So I have found that the albino cherry barbs are pretty dopey little things. I think it might be just because they're albino, but they sort of just hover there and don't do a terrible lot of stuff like swimming. There's not much else that baby fish do, apart from swimming, eating, uh, all that sort of stuff. But that is the basics of how to feed all your baby fish. So I thought I would just tell people about this stuff because a lot of people have, don't even know that it's around, I think. Um, a lot of breeders overseas use it. I've continuously started using this with all of my fish now, so I probably never ever hatch any brine shrimp again unless they magically run out of this stuff but it is even cheaper than buying brine shrimp eggs. So there you go. If you wanna know more about this, just comment down below. If you wanna know about microworms and that, just comment down below as well. You'll be able to pick up microworm cultures on eBay, online. They just send you a little bit of microworms and you can culture them yourself. Super, super easy. Anyway, and I totally forgot to tell a lot of people that Kate had her babies. So we have hundreds and hundreds of mini Kates there are a lot of cakes. So this is a 300 litre tank and the floor is currently packed with little cakes. How cool are they? So they're just a blue genetic version of a Queensland red claw crayfish. If you're not too sure what they are, there's one on the screen. So that is Kate. How cool are they? So I'll have lots and lots of baby cakes in the next month or two. Yay, Kate. Anyway, thank you very much for watching this very quick video and we will see you that's probably a bit too big for him no he's a bit too big for that we will see you in the next video bye